welcome to a new episode of the Dev Talks for SAP Nativa Cloud. I'm Renu Guerra and today we will talk about the document service of SAP Nativa Cloud. And I have with me Florian Müller. Hello. He's uh, responsible for uh, also for the document service, works in the team that works on this topic. Um, Florian, um, you, as you know, I already worked a little bit with the document service and um, was wondering if you could maybe explain what the document service is about. Okay. okay. So the, the document service is a service within the NetWeaver cloud that allows um, applications that are running in the cloud environment to store unstructured documents. Like Word document, PDF, Excel, whatever you have on, mm -hmm. your, on your hard disk, whatever you need in your, uh, in your business processes on, uh, in, on unstructured content can be stored there. Um, it's like an enterprise content management system, it just uh, provides an API to do all the things you would expect from an enterprise content management system. So what kind of API is that? Is it, and you're saying it's, it's a kind of an enterprise content management system. What, what kind, uh, from, from an architectural point of view, what kind of um, assets do you have there? Okay, so what we are doing, we are uh, sitting on top of CMS. CMS is an industry standard for content management systems. Mm -hmm. um, it stands for uh, um, Content Management Interoperability Services. It's, it's from the Apache organization, right? No. No, it's not from Apache? <laughs> No, it's, it's actually an OASIS standard, um, okay. and mm -hmm. it's supported by a lot of companies, um, uh, Microsoft, IBM, uh, Documentum, they all have uh, repositories that support CMS. CMS is basically a description of an interface, mm -hmm. how to deal with uh, enterprise content management systems, how to store documents, how to organize documents in folders, how to deal with metadata, how to deal with versioning, um, there's a query language that is SQLite, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever you have worked with, a, with an enterprise content management system that supports CMS and you have used CMS, then using the um, uh, document service is like just another content management system. The difference is it's in the cloud and it's available for the applications running in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So how, how uh, do people develop that? So um, in case they want to now use this, as you said, it's, it's uh, a content management system that people can use. Mm -hmm. So I assume they can do versioning, right. they can um, have access control levels for, right. on, on, for, for users, right. groups and so on. So what, what else is in there? Um, well, let, let's start with the, with the basics. So the basics are documents, of course. You can store mm -hmm. content of, of any size. Um, you uh, have metadata attached to these documents. CMIS defines a set of the default metadata like a creation date, a modification date, a creator, um, a modifier, uh, the size, the MIME type, stuff like that, all the, all the things you would expect um, as metadata on a, on a document. Um, with the new CMS standard, so at the, at the moment we are talking about CMS 1.0, mm -hmm. uh, CMS 1.1 is, is hopefully being ratified within the next few months and we are already working on an implementation of CMS 1.1. And this gives us more um, capabilities like creating your own set of metadata and attaching the metadata you like to a document. We talked about that yesterday. We talked about that. I, I tried it out yesterday and wanted to <laughs> add some metadata yeah. into it, uh, but it, it didn't work yet um, completely as I thought it, it could. Yeah. There are some hidden features. Yeah, we, we actually can do it on a, on a, from a technical perspective, uh, but the interface is new in CMS 1.1 and we are implementing that at the moment. Okay, so uh, as is a DevTalks series, um, why don't you just explain how people can access the functionality? So I heard from you that we have um, on, a, on, a, um, on a protocol level we have a standard, mm -hmm. uh, the CMIS standard. So uh, how do people um, use or can access uh, or use this protocol to, uh, um, to use the service on the Java level? So what do they, what okay. do they need? Well, the big advantage of, of CMS that it's a standard protocol or a set mm -hmm. of standard protocols and you can use whatever tool you like. There are a lot of um, um, development tools, end user tools, uh, libraries out there for basically any programming language you, you can think of. Uh, what we are using here is, is a Java library um, that's Apache Chemistry Open mm -hmm. So what we do is basically providing this interface to you if you want to use it. It's really easy to use. If you want to write your own protocol handler, you can do that because it's a standard protocol. Mm -hmm. um, Open CMS is basically um, a layer on top of CMS that gives you a nice object oriented um, API. A it's, a, it's a wrapper, it basically hides all the, all the um, uh, protocol stuff. So yeah, you're not getting in touch with any HTTP calls or something like that. Mm -hmm. the, the library hides it completely for you. 
the only thing you see is a Java API uh, with all the things you would expect from the Java API. So how does it, how does it work from a, from a flow perspective? Let's assume people who are uh, just uh, watching or hearing this right now would like to use the, the, the document service. How do, they, mm -hmm. how do they do that with Native Cloud? Okay, um, so one thing that's not defined in the CMIS specification is how do you create a repository? And that's probably the first thing you would do. You have to, you need a place where you actually store your, your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, creating a, a repository is just a few lines of code from an uh, a SAP Native or Cloud application. Mm -hmm. So basically we provide a cloud that, that is called um, ECM Factory. Mm -hmm. And this factory, with this factory, you create uh, what OpenSeamus calls a session object. And the session object then gives you access to all the stuff in the repository. Okay. But if, if there is no repository, and that's probably your, your starting point, um, then it will return uh, with an error message and say, well, you wanted to access a repository, but, but it's not there. Okay. Um, and, and in this case, you have to create one. Mm -hmm. And after you've created, you can, you can use it. Um, to create a repository, you need two things. You need a unique name. Um, the unique name is the name of your repository. And Meaning that I can have multiple repositories? You can have as many repositories as you like. For, even for one NetViewer Cloud application? Uh, even for one NetViewer Cloud application. So okay. the repository does not map one-to-one -to, -one to, uh, to an application. So you can use one repository uh, by multiple applications, mm -hmm. or you can have multiple repositories for one application. It doesn't okay. matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so the first thing you need is, a, is this unique name. Uh, you have to come up with something that's unique within the whole cloud. So you better use something that is that has like your domain name in it, or like a Java package, or something like that. So that mm -hmm. it really has to be unique within within the whole platform. And then you need a secret key, and this secret key is, as the name suggests, um, kind of a password to your repository. Ah, I know A B C D one two three four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This or another one. Um, <laughs> ABC123, but that's not so secure. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like to choose? Um, the, this, this key, together with the name, gives you access to your repository. If multiple repositories want to access one repository, you just give the repository these two credentials and you have access to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, once you have um, created the repository, this is just one line of JavaScript code, you can connect to the repository and well, you're ready to go. Okay, now that I am ready to go, what do I do? What can I do then? Okay, so the session object gives you access, or the, the OpenSeam session ob object gives you access to everything the repository supports. Um, it gives you by default a root folder, and from this root folder you can build up a folder hierarchy, or you can directly store document there. Um, uh, you can do queries if, there's already, uh, if there are already documents, you can um, use, use a SQLite query to, to find what you need. Mm -hmm. Um, you can version documents, so you can create multiple versions of one document. You can, of course, what do you expect? Delete, get the content, uh, update properties, update the content stream, all this kind of thing okay. you would expect from an enterprise content management system. Um, this includes uh, access control, um, so we support ACLs. Or the CMA specification defines ACLs and we have implemented them. So you basically can. ACLs is access control. control levels. Yeah, I'm okay. sorry, I'm dealing with this every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so you basically can define for each document and for each folder um, which user is allowed to do what with this object. Mm -hmm. So and I assume this is uh, connected with the identity management service from Native Cloud? Yes and no. Um, mm -hmm. On a technical level it's actually not, uh, but the client is able to transfer the current user to the repository. Mm -hmm. So that means if you're writing a, a, let's say, a web application and you're already using the identity service, um, that user walks into your application, uh, mm -hmm. you can connect to the repository and basically uh, and tell the, the uh, ECM factory that you want uh, to forward this user to the repository. And then this user is actually used as, um, as the user in the repository. I see. Another option is you can, you can define your own uh, username. So that means if you want to have something like an admin user or a service user, mm -hmm. And you, for example, you don't need any access control for whatever, for whatever reason. You can connect with a service user, um, and then only the the service user has access and, and can do stuff with that. So mm -hmm. it it really depends on the application what it what it wants wants. If it wants to use the identity service, it's really easy to do so. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, it uh, creates their their own users basically. Okay, but I mean, if if you want to keep your life easy, you try to. Reuse what is right. out there already. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so if you, if you if you have the um, uh, the requirement that your users, um, yeah, 
users outside of the cloud should match the users inside the repository, that's a no-brainer. Mm. And you just don't do anything and it works out of the box. So, okay, so meaning that, yeah, got that. So, uh, what, what about um, um, maybe synchronizing this Netiva Cloud, um, uh, this Netiva Cloud document service with another document service that, for example, runs in, in your company? Mm -hmm. um, are there any uh, connections? Well, the or, is, or is it based on the standard? If, if yeah. You, mm -hmm. So yeah, so the document service uh, out of the box is only accessible from within the cloud environment. Mm -hmm. um, so. If you want to, if you want to um, use another client to connect to it, you have to install what we call the uh, the CMS proxy. This is something we provide, but each application has to decide if it wants to use this proxy or not. Okay. So by default, it's not installed. Um, so this reduces the security issues because you cannot access the data from outside. But if you install it, you get a, the full-fledged CMS API exposed to the internet. Okay. And then you can use a lot of tools that are already out there and a lot of uh, development environments and libraries and whatever have whatever you want. Um, and you can contact the, uh, the document service from behind your firewall and upload documents, get documents, whatever you, whatever you like to, uh, to do. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there are actually a, a lot of tools. You find iPad clients, Android clients, desktop tools, web um, frameworks. Um, even if you, if you look at the last LibreOffice um, version, it can directly connect to the, to the document service. You can actually store your documents, um, the thing that you actually type at this moment, yeah. directly in, into the document service. So that's cool. Me meaning what you're saying is it really depends on the use case that, uh, exactly. that, that, that you yeah. have. If you want to expose it directly or if you want yeah. to, let's say, have this, this additional security um, level where the CMIS is running in the cloud itself and it's not right. being exposed. Yeah, it's, it's really up to the application. If it wants to expose the CMS interface, this is just a few lines of configuration and you're done. That sounds cool. So, um, what, comes, what comes next? So, right now, um, as you said, uh, we have implemented the CMIS version 1.0. Exactly. Um, uh, and the, the next one is about to come in a few weeks or months. Yeah. So what we, comes next with the document service of the cloud? As I already said, we, we're trying to implement, well, we're implementing CMS 1.1 at the moment with all the new features that CMS 1.1 um, includes, mainly um, uh, creation of types and your know, metadata structure and whatever you have. You know. uh, SAP is also part of CMS. And SAP is part of the technical committee that defines it. Okay. Uh, we will have um, yeah, a few things I, I pr probably shouldn't talk about, but we basically will, in the end, support CMS 1.1. Mm -hmm. um, more or less completely. Um, the next thing on our roadmap is uh, is full text search. That's something that CMS one um, uh, one o and one one define, mm -hmm. and it's on, on our roadmap. We are working on that at the moment. Wait a second. You're meaning looking through documents stored, exactly PDF, Word documents, exactly this, this kind of thing, so that you can can cool. search by the content mm -hmm. um, of your documents. Um, yeah. So and there are a few. Uh, things on the roadmap I cannot really talk about, but uh, we will we will um, increase or make it better every every time we add more and more features. There's maybe one feature um, that we haven't mentioned yet um, that is not common to other CMS repositories. Uh, we also have a virus scanner. Mm -hmm. So if you if you enable that when you create your your repository, um, every document is scanned. Oh, and cool. if, I didn't know that. If if uh, mm -hmm. it contains a virus, it's rejected. Can I do that too as a SAP employee? You need to tell me. Maybe after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's just one one switch, and oh, then, cool. then it's then it's enabled. So that, that you are sure that there are really no viruses also in your content management system, or at, at least the uh, probability of a virus is, is reduced. It's, right. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we scan it when it comes in. If it contains a virus that is not known at this point in time, mm -hmm. well, yeah, you have to live with it. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, so um, thank you first of all. So. Um, I think right now we have a better understanding of what the document service does for Nativa Cloud. Uh, for those of you who have questions, um, Florian has also a, a Twitter handle, Florian and the line Miller. I will put it again on the video. Uh, my name is Rui Nogueira, the same, um, the same Twitter handle, Rui Nogueira. And uh, just follow the SAPNW Cloud uh, Twitter handle too. It uh, provides you with some interesting news around um, this great product. And uh, yeah. See you soon to, uh, at one of the next episodes of the Dev Talks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.